we'll be having our uh, discussion, marathon discussion today uh, so that we can able to cope up those uh, missed topics. So uh, as much as possible, we can finish the whole forensic anthropology uh, for this day. So I hope na prepare prepare yung data ninyo kasi di ba uh, I know for sure that you already aware that uh, for this particular course we have five hours but a uh, minimum of uh, online class minimum yun na at least we can have an online class of at least two hours di ba so don't worry, hindi ko naman paabuti ng, ng 1.30 to. Diba kaya sabi, sabi ko sana prepare yung data ninyo. Anyway, you will just, uh, ano naman, listening with, I am discussing with you for today's topic. So, kanina po, I uploaded in our Canvas LMS the discussion for today uh, under your week 2 and week 3. Diba? May additional na ano dyan, na presentation na in-upload ko for you to be able to read on those particular topic para at least pa paano you will able to acquire the knowledge that is necessary for this particular course. So, uh, let us start. Mamaya na yung attendance or sige, bago pala para kahit pa paano may advantage yung mga maagang pumasok. ba? So, still, the attendance for today is only 36. So, alimurong? Alimurong, nandyan? Wala. Basilio? Basilio po, ma'am, present po. Nandyan? Present po. Alma? Talma? Ma'am, alimurong po, present, ma'am. Nakandito po ako. Delay po. Okay, kalma. Kindly monitor the chat box if some somebody uh, will not able to say present. Kasi because of technicalities when it comes to their microphones or whatsoever. So kalma, wala. Kanlas. Kanlas. Wala rin. Ah, kanlas Diana. Aileen. Wala talaga. Kanlas, Jeremia. Kanlas, Jeremia. Wala rin. Carlos, Carl. Present po, Carlos. Carpio, Juana. Carpio, Juana. Yes. Ah, uh, wala si Carpio Juana. Castro Luigi. Present po, ma'am. Castro Treven. Present po. Bilion Jumela. Present po. Biluna Jan Edward. Present po. De La Cruz Brooklyn Kyle. De La Cruz Bro Brooklyn Kyle. Wale. De Los Reyes Daniel. Present po. Dizon Alexander. Present po. Dizon Ayan Carlo. Dizon Ayan Carlo, wala. Isguera Jonas Carl. Isguera Jonas Carl. Wala rin. Giao Ju... Ah... How do I pronounce your name? Joaquim Lorenzo Emmanuel Giao. <laughs> Haba pangalan na. Nandyan ba si Giao? Wala si Giao. Uh, Joaquim Lorenzo Emmanuel. Giao John, Fe uh, John Perry. Present po. Lakbu Ronnie. Sira daw po, Mike. Yung... Okay, nandiyan si Lakbo. Thank you. Lakson, Lester. Lakson. Wala din. Lalas, Libunaw, Ramir. Libunaw? 
Wala. Lising, Albert. Lising po, present. Makam, Jian. Present po. Manalili, Jan Eric. Present po. Manalo, Oliver, Jan. Manalo po, ma'am, present. Manaloto, Christine Laika. Manaloto? Walay. Manlutak, Melvin. Manlutak, Melvin. Walay. Masangkay, James Patrick. Medina, Michael Joseph. Present po. Sino yun? Mercado, Haifa. Present po, ma'am. Mercado, Russell. Mercado, Russell, present, ma'am. Navarro, Jamil. Navarro, Jamil. Walay. Pajarillaga, Angelo, James. Present po. Palisok, Janine. Present po. Pangan, Marilyn. Present po, ma'am. Pantig, Clarence. Pantig, Clarence. Muli. Pineda, Queen Burley. Present, ma'am. Regala, you are the president, Miss Pineda, right? For this section? Uh, hindi po, ma'am. Ah. Para ko ikaw. Okay, Regala, Justine. Present po, ma'am. Rongkilio. Paula Present May. Po. San Juan Joshua. Present po. Santos Mary Ann. Present po. Sung Lao, Mark A. 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 Present po. Sung Lao, Trisha Ann. Present po. Aya, Justin Paul. Present po, ma'am. Tulimpino, Christian Kyle. Tulimpino. Wale. Uzi, Christian. Present po, ma'am. Yabot, Charles. Yabot, Present Charles. Present po. Present. Okay. Ang wala, Tulimpino, Pantig, Navarro, Manlotak, Manaloto, Libunaw, Lakso, Lakson, Giao, Joaquin, Sgera, Dizon, Ian Carlo, De La Cruz, Carpio, Canada. Sino? Sino yung nasabing present? Si Esguera po. Ah, Esguera present. Giao po. Giao. Present din. So, this one, Ian Carlo, absent. De La Cruz, Brooklyn, absent. Carpio, Juana, absent. Canlas, Jeremia, and Canlas, Diana, Aileen, absent. Calma, absent. Yun. Sila na lang ang absent. Diba? So, as I've said, sana, mabog sila. Kasi nga, as I've told you, we will be discussing additional topic for week number two. And at the same time, the week number three. And I hope that we can able to finish everything today. So, as I told you kanina, I uploaded a topic on your canvas pertaining to week two. So, this is uh, part of the introductory discussion of Force 212. Ba? Kasi hindi kasi na sali ng ano ng course developer tong uh, topic na ito which is part of the week number two. So uh, the fundamental of personal identification techniques part one. So for the unit outcome or the objective of this discussion at the end of this day, uh, you will be expected to define criminalistics and value its importance and purpose. Second, summarize the historical development of personal identification and understand the purposes and fundamentals of studying personal identification techniques. Third, for you to explain and differentiate the ancient or early and modern personal identification techniques. And last but not the least, for you to discuss the significance of the different uh, identification techniques. 
most likely it has something to do with what we had discussed last time. But ito additional kasi some of the points here are not yet uh, included in our discussion last week. Diba? So for this specific topic, so we will be discussing the nature of personal identification, the historical background of personal identification, and the early methods of personal identification. So part of this discussion is to define what is the so-called criminalistics or known as so-called forensic science. Do not be confused with yourself because these two terminologies are just the same. Diba? These are the terminologies referred to the so-called forensic sciences or the so-called criminalistic course. Po. So when we say criminalistics or forensic science, it is defined as the study of criminal things. So when we speak of, of the so-called criminal things, what does it mean? Anybody from the group who can able to uh, explain if we say criminal things that pertains to what? Huh? Any idea in your mind? Pag sinabi natin criminal things, it is said that the so-called criminalistics or forensic science, this is defined as the study of criminal things. Yes? Someone is ano, talking there. So, anybody who can share your idea if we say criminal things, the study of criminal things? Should I call someone to answer? Or anybody? Pag-aaral sa mga evidence, ma'am. Very good. Sino tong nagsasabi na pag-aaral sa mga ebidensya na mga ganun-ganun, ma'am? You will have the points. Sino yun? Pusip po, ma'am. Ako po, ma'am. Anong abriyado? Pusip po. Ah, Mr. O.C. So, meron ng points si Mr. O.C. Mr. O.C. is right. When we speak of study of criminal things, it has something to do with the so-called evidences particularly the so-called physical evidences. So anybody who among you able to describe what is the so-called physical evidences or who can give an example of physical evidences? Fingerprint, ma'am. Ah, sino yun? Just state your name kasi hindi ko na makikita ang pangalan ninyo kasi nag-share screen ako. Lalas po, ma'am. Fingerprint. Okay. Lalas. So, one of the credible example of the so-called uh, the, the so-called na physical evidence is fingerprint and that is right. Diba? Fingerprint is considered as physical evidence, diba? Most likely these are a uh, type of impressions that is usually recovered or located at the crime scene. Diba? So another definition of the so-called criminalistics or forensic science, it involves the applications of scientific techniques to the solution of crime. Diba? When we see application of scientific techniques, what does it mean? Pag sinabi natin scientific techniques, it connotes what? Or it emphasizes what? Basilio Pong. Yes, Mr. Basilio. There's a laboratory involvement. My laboratory involvement. Or there is certain procedure na pinafollow in the solution of crime. So that's right, Mr. Basilio. Nandun si Daddy. That we will able to involve the so-called laboratory procedure in which we can able to come up with a solution of crimes, diba? That is the nature or the so-called uh, definition of criminalistics or forensic science. So forensic science or criminalistics will provide us a basic knowledge of physical evidences such as photography, 
fingerprints and other impressions, nasokol balisis, glass, hair, fiber, paint, handwriting, and document examination, as well as drugs and instrumental methods of analysis. Kasi kaya nga, application of scientific procedure or processes. So, take note that the word forensic derived from the Latin word forenses, which means an open court or public. Or the term was derived from the old Latin word a forum, which means a marketplace. Diba pag sinabi nating marketplace, this is a place where people gather for purposes of public discussion. Diba as we all know, the, the basic na, na concept ng tinatawag nating merkado or palengke, yan po yung lugar kung saan may palitan ng transaction or there is a so-called public discussion. Kasi nga, di ba, nang doon is buying and selling. So, commonly, di ba, they are exchanging goods and services or, di ba, uh, product. And commonly, di ba, yung means of communication is consistently uh, facilitated on such particular uh, area po or place. So, that is the nature of forensic or forensics na pinatawag. So, the so-called forensic science or criminalistics, it also provides techniques of comparing an item discovered at the crime scene with an item associated with or found on the suspect. So, meaning to say that in terms of the so-called application of criminalistics or forensic sciences, we can establish, diba? A comparison between two things, the standard na, na item, which is pag sinabi nating standard that was taken from the actual suspect's body, and with those items that is being recovered at the crime scene. So, di ba? Paano natin may establish yun? By means of forensic science or the so-called criminalistics. So, criminalistics also defined as the forging of many scientific discipline into one relevant concerted effort under the rules of evidence to establish circumstantially the innocent or the guilt of the accused. Diba? So, sabi natin kanina, application of scientific processes and procedure. Diba? So, in the application of scientific processes and procedure, we need to hire or we need the services of the scientific community. Pag sinabi natin scientific community, we are referring to the people who are what? Specialized on the field of forensic science. Like, for example, yung mga chemists. Diba? Or yung mga, uh, mga expert on the field of criminalistics or forensic sciences. Diba? We need their services in which they conforming to the rules of evidence. So, if we say conforming to the rules of evidence, they should follow what is the standard in terms of dealing such evidence in which it is necessary for the establishment of the innocence or the guilt of the accused in which a particular has been or particular crime has been solved. Diba? That is one of the credible description of the so-called forensic science or criminalistics. So, forensic science or criminalistic refers to the applications of the principles of various sciences in solving problems in connection with the administration of justice. So, applications of uh, principles of various sciences, hindi lamang iisang 
standards ang sinusunod. As much as possible, this is a collaborative effort. Diba? Or yung pinatawag nating collaboration or coordination with other na ano po na field in which we can able to come up with a possible solution of the so-called crime. Diba? Or most likely, we utilize the so-called forensic science or criminalistics in which we come up with a solution, uh, most especially in the administration of justice. So, it is known that Dr. Hans, credited as the father of modern criminalistics. So who is the so-called Dr. Hans? Dr. Hans is an Australian magistrate. So pag sinabi natin magistrate, ano yun? In, in layman's term, magistrado. ano bang trabaho ng magistrado mga kapatid? Most likely, pag tinatawag nating magistrate, saan nagtatrabaho to? Anybody from the group? When we see magistrate? Kasi si Dr. Hans Gross, he was considered or credited as the father of modern criminalistics. And at the same time, he is um, an Australian magistrate to describe search for truth as the goal of all investigative and detective works. So, pag sinabi natin magistrate, ano siya? Judge. Judge? Sino yung nagsasabi? Na judge? Santos. Santos? Santos Okay, Santos, Mary Ann. And Miss Santos is right. Pag sinabi nating magistrate, it could be a judge or justices of the court. Diba? So, aside from being a judge and justices of the court, Dr. Hans Gross was credited as modern criminalistic, criminal, uh, mod, father of modern criminalistics because he always search for truth or di ba by nature nagkakandak po siya ng investigation to come up with a credible decision over a particular case and because of that effort he made he was then credited di ba kilala siya in terms of historical background ng so called criminalistic science or criminalistics or forensic science he was one of the important personality that relates on that account. Diba? So, yun po yung background niya. So, uh, in U.S., the father of criminalistics is known as Dr. Pork, Paul Kirk po. Diba? Siya po yung uh, tinaraguri ang father of criminalistics in United States of America po. Then, uh, bakit po sila nag-come up ng tinatawag na forensic science? Ano po ba ang significance or the importance of these particular aspects or in day four? So, forensic science is merged with civil and criminal laws so that it would be easy to conceive any regulation or any environmental protection act or laws that could be effectively monitored and enforced with the assistance of scientific technology and the skills of the scientific community. So it means that forensic science came into existence because it is vital in resolving a conflict. Most especially, it has something to do with resolution of civil case and criminal case. Diba? In which, out of this so-called forensic science or criminalistics or the, the so-called importance of this is for us to easily come up with a particular law that would uh, somehow protect the individuals as part of the totality in the community. 
di ba? Para kahit pa paano, we can able to come up with a particular gui guidelines in which we can able to identify what are acts considered as criminal acts and those considered are not, not criminal acts. Di ba? Sa pamamagitan nito, we can have the reference. Yun po yung isa sa kalagahan ni forensic science na kung saan, di ba, uh, makapag, uh, ano tayo, come up ng credible na guidelines in which we can have the existence of the law at the same time, we can be able to control such acts, di ba? Well, of course, with the help of the scientific technology and the assistance of scientific community. Pag sinabi nating scientific technology, di ba, in the uh, applications of the so-called criminalistics or forensic sciences, it means that you, you are able to deal with so-called technology or equipment or instrument in which we, we can able to facilitate the solution of the crime problem. And, well, of course, kinakailangan yung highly technical skills of the so-called scientific community, yung mga expert in the field, di ba? So that they can able to explain in, the, in, a, in a deeper uh, na meaning or understanding kung bakit nangyari po yung mga ganong bagay. So that is one of the common or the uh, the, the basic importance of the so-called criminalistics or forensic science. So let's proceed with ancient and modern methods of personal identification. So it is said that the uh, down the ages of different periods in man man's history, man tried a variety of ways to separate a person from all other for purposes of establishing personal identification. Diba sabi natin last time, when we see personal identification, ito yung tinatawag dating pagkakinlanlan ng tao. We can able to establish a, a distinction between human being from other being po. So, yun po yung one of the credible na na ano po uh, kalagahan why we come up with the so-called personal identification techniques. So there are different methods of identification. So una, there is the so-called identifications of living person. So pag sinabi nating identification of living person, we can able to identify yung mga buhay na tao. But in identifying the living person, meron pong iba't ibang characteristics. At isa na sa mga characteristics na yun, yung tinatawag nating characteristics that may easily be changed. Ura-uradang pwede nating baguhin. At ito yung mga yun. Growth of hair, beard, and mustache. Diba? Alam naman natin yung mahabang buhok, pwedeng paiklian. Yung mga labigoting mga mukha ng mga lalaki or mabalbas, pwedeng ishave, ura-urada, magbago na. Diba? Kaya nga common characteristics, it is easily be changed or ura-uradang baguhin. Another, clothing. Diba? Na-mention din natin to last time. In terms of clothing, like for example ngayon, because of the trending na, na fashion style na ang mga kababaihan, diba? Nagsusuot ng ano na mini skirt, micro mini, o di kaya yung tinatawag na pectic shorts. Diba? Na kung saan napakadaming mahilig magsusuot na makikita na yung mga kuyokot. O di kaya, diba? Some of the, the celebrities are known for their manner of clothing. Like for example, iba na alawi na mahilig nagsusuot ng tibak. Oh, diba? Na yung ano lang, yung kanal lang sa puwet ang pinatakpan. Yung, yung dalawang pisngi ng puwet niya, nakabalandra lang. Diba? That is one of pagkakinlanlan ng tao. Frequent place of visit. Mahilig pumunta sa Starbucks. But nung nagsawa na sa Starbucks, lumipat ng UCC o di kaya lumipat ng coffee bean. Diba? Or uh, kung saan-saan na lugar na hilig puntahan. Diba po pwede yung ura-ura na mabago kasi nga it depends sa pansa tao. Then, Grade or profession. 
'di ba? Yung ibang ano nga professional like for example, yung mga teacher nagsawang magturo, nagpalit ng career. 'Di ba? So that is easily be changed. Or body ornamentation, such as earrings, necklace, rings, bracelets, watch, and others. Di ba? That is easily be changed in terms of earrings. Kung minsan, di ba, ayaw mo ng, ano, ayaw mo yung simpleng earring. Ang gusto mo yung dangling. Super dangling na hanggang balikat na po. Di ba? Like, for example, yung mga celebrities po. Di ba? Oo. Oh. Parang ako ang nalibadbaran na uh, yung ano nila, earrings nila, parang pamaypay. Ang lalaki, ang hahaba. ba diba? It depends upon the choice of a person. The same with the necklace. ba diba? Yan, palatandaan yan. Yung mga jewelry as we said last time. Then, yung mga characteristics that may not be easily changed. Ibig sabihin, matagal kung kung baguhin natin or palitan. Like, for example, mental memory. ba? Diba? May mga tao na grabe yung memoria po na ma- ma- ka-able to recall. Na di ba, uh, nangyari yan yung ganito-ganito. O di ba? Hindi yan basta-basta mabago. The same with the manner of speech. Kaya nga, like, for example, ako, dahil bisaya ko, so, hindi may na kung minsan, Ah, uh, yung A pareho ng tunog ng E, yung I with E, the U and O. Dahil, 'di ba, pagdating sa Visayan language or vernacular po namin, medyo matigas din po yung dila namin na halos kapareho ng mga Ilocano. 'Di ba? So, the manner of speech medyo matagal po siyang mabago. Then the gait or manner of walking. Diba? Yung iba pike, yung iba is mga, ano, mga sakang o di kaya kung ano yung manner of walking nila. Diba? Or yung iba, yung mannerism. Diba? Commonly sa mga lalaki, umaalog-alog yung mga paa. Based on psychological na perspective, uh, ginagawa daw yan ng mga lalaki, most especially pag tense o di kaya That is one of their way of ano po, releasing their tension or releasing their orgasm. Diba? According to psychological perspective. Then the hands and feet. Diba? Pagdating sa kamay and paa, just po, ang hirap baguhin yan. Diba? Like for example, may isa yung kamay mo. Mabago pa kaya yan? Siguro kung mag-undergo ka ng operation, dugtungan. Period, but, but by nature, it is not easily be changed. Complexion. Ah, pero right now, di ba? Right now, napaka dali na lang magbago ng complexion as long as you have the resources or the money. But for example, punta ka ng Vicky Bello or Bello Clinic. Di ba? Para yung ano, malamorena mong katawan magiging white. Diba? And vice versa po. Face. Diba yung uh, shape ng face ng tao or yung itsura ng mukha ng tao, mahirap yun palitan. Not unless, sabi ko nga, sobrang yaman mo. Mag-undergo ka ng operation for that. Then, eyes. Diba? Yung mga bilog ang mata o yung mga singkit. Diba? Ira palitan 'yun, pwede namang pa ano, palakihin yung mata mo. As long as may money ka and mag-undergo ka ng operation, di ba? Then the body build. Di ba yung body build up ng tao, talagang mahirap din po 'yun palitan. Kasi nga, di ba, yung mga mataba, just ko ang hirap magpapayat. Ang payat naman mahirap patabain, di ba? in terms of body build. Then, the left or right-handedness. ba? Diba? Like for example, ako right-handed, pero kaya ko magsulat ng left hand, pero hindi ganun ka, kaaya yung sulat ka may bag sa left hand. Kasi from the very start, I am a right-handed person. ba? Diba? So, isa din po yan sa 
pagkakinlan lang ng tao na kikilala. Sino nga si ganito? Yung ano, yung left-handed na pag nagsulat, pag ganon. ba diba? May mga ganun tao. Then, the degree of nutrition. This is another na characteristics that is given into consideration in terms of personal identification. So, pag sinabi natin degree of nutrition, di ba? it will connotes the body build or it has something to do with the body build of a person. Diba? So, yun po yung dalawang characteristics na yun. Then, uh, the following are the identification that is applicable to both living and dead persons. We have occupational mark. Like for example, yung kalyo sa kamay. Diba? Isa lang sa palatanda na ang trabaho ng tao na yan is medyo mabigat or medyo uh, matigas po. Diba? And that is the reason na nag-come up siya ng makakapal na kalyo sa kamay. Then the race. Sabi nga natin, pag sinabi natin race, lahi ng tao. Diba? Medyo mahirap talaga I, ano yan, ah, palitan yan. And commonly, this is applicable to both living and the dead person. Then we have the stature or katayuan. O di kaya, pag sinabi natin stature, uh, it has something to do with the basic na, na ano po, information tao. Diba? Like for example, tinitingnan kung ano bang uh, lahi nitong tao na to para we can able to uh, identify the actual na ano po stature ng tao kung gaano siya mga 6 footer po siya or mga 5-7 lang siya mga ganon then fourth odontology or so called teeth so teeth or odontology that is the identification with the use of dental records so yun po yung odontology or the so called Teeth. Then, as we said, the tattoo marks, di ba? Tattoos ng katawan. So, applicable po siya sa patay at saka sa buhay na tao at the same time, di ba? Uh, ito po yung isa sa mga markings na kung saan medyo mahirap din tanggalin. And at the same time, magastos po siyang tanggalin, di ba? Then, the scar marks, yung mga peklat ng tao. The same with mga balat, birthmarks, and yung tinatawag nating deformities or pers, uh, physical na ano po, physical na mga ano uh, tawag nating ano tawag to physical deformities or mga uh, hindi totally developed in our body. Like for example, uh, kulang yung daliri sa kamay. Diba? That is a form of deformities. And most likely, diba, uh, itong deformities na to, ito yung nagsisilbing uh, pagkakinlanlan ng tao and yung mga nunal mol sa katawan natin. Another is the injuries living permanent result. Diba? Souvenir. <laughs> like for example, Ah, uh, nasugat ka up to third generative layer. ba? So, malamang sa malamang, magkakaroon po yan ng peklat na mag-serve as permanent result. Then, tribal marks. ba? Sabi nga natin last time, like for example, yung mga sorority and fraternity groups, nag-come up sila ng ganun, ng tinatawag nating tribal marks. ba? They do have a particular markings na kung saan uh, swak sa within the tribe. Uh, for a while lang guys, kuha lang ako ng tubig ha. Kasi ang katin ang lalamunan ko, uh, two minutes.
Huwag mong sayangin yan, ha? Pagalitan na ni Dami. Okay, another method is the so-called sexual organs. Diba? Nowadays, pwede naman siyang palitan. Pero, yun nga, madalas punta ka muna, pinaka malapit na lugar is Thailand. Diba? Yung, yung mga lalaki na nagpapalit into babae na sexual organs. Diba? We can able to identify by by uh, ano po uh, identifying the presence of testes and ovaries. Diba? Isa po yan sa credible na pagkakinlan na ng tao. Then another is the so-called blood grouping. So, in terms of blood grouping, diba ang blood, magagamit din natin siya to identify the identity of an individual person. So, by using the uh, blood typing. So, it could be the utilizations of the A, uh, B, A, B, or O system, or yung tinatawag natin A, B, O system of classification, or <coughs> the other classification, which is the MN system. So, Sila Mr. Lala, sila Mr. Basilio, dahil estudyante ko sila ng forensic yan, alam nila yan. Diba? Uh, na nagagamit natin si Vlad as means of identification of a person because we can able to establish a person in terms of blood. Then, aside from that, the so-called handwriting and signature. Diba? Commonly in case of mga forgery and fraud cases in terms of uh, por forging of signature. Most especially, uh, has something to do with bouncing check or check na ano po, na mga uh, issues po. Then, aside from handwriting and signature, anthropometry, so which is our next topic. Anthropometry, this is an earliest method of identification wherein it is applicable to both living and the, and the dead. Diba? We can able to measure the bony parts of the body of a person. Then, the famous fingerprint or otherwise known as dactyloscopy or dactylography. Pariho lang yan. And last but not the least, so-called DNA or the so-called dioxyribinoclic acid fingerprinting, which is one of the uh, one of uh, considered as uh, an exact science, and uh, that is part of our discussion on this particular topic. So in terms of early methods of identification, sabi nga natin last time, the tattooing is one of the primitive na means of identification. But nevertheless, tattooing can be changed, copied, and maybe damaged and had some other purpose aside from identification. Diba? Lalo na right now. The purpose of tattoo is for body ornamentation or body design. Diba? Yun yung isa sa gamit ni tattoo right now. So, uh, hindi talaga siya super duper na ano po na credible kasi po pwede siyang baguhin o pwede siyang alisin. Di ba? Hindi po siya sustainable kung gugusoy ng taong palitan. Okay. Uh, history tells that the first methods of criminal identification uh, to, to be reliable based on the criteria of bony measurements and become part of criminal investigation processes. And that is known as anthropometry or the so-called vertilionage system of identification, which was introduced by Alfon, Alphonse Bertillon, who was known as the father of personal or criminal identification. 
So, isa po siya sa kauna-unahang system of identification, yung tinatawag nating anthropometry or anthropometric system of identification or otherwise known as virtual unit system. Tinatawag po siyang virtual unit system kasi si Alphonse Bertillion po yung nag-device ng system na yon, which is in relation to criminal investigation processes. So, kumbaga, credible po siya na system of identification until such time na napalitan siya because of a particular case. Yung tinatawag po natin, uh, yung sa, sa twin brother case, si West brother. Diba? So, in relation to anthropometry, uh, in Fra France Police Department, they adapted the so-called anthropometry in the year 1882. But later part of 19th, 19th century, French police named it portrait parley, or whose meaning refers to likeness, pagkakapareho. So, yun po yung nangyayari. So, anthropometry, uh, it is defined as the first scientific method of personal identification by which or which is done by measuring the various bony structure of the human body. So, yun po yung nature ni anthropometry. Minimeasure yung mga major bony parts of our body po. So, sabi nga natin, it, it was uh, Alphonse Bertillion who devised the system. And that is the reason why he was credited as the father of personal identification because of Bertillion system. So he was the first to devise a scientific method of identification, which is called as anthropometry, or as I've said, otherwise known as Bertillion system. So he is known to be the father also of the so-called magshot photography. Siya po ang isa din sa tinatagro yung father of magshot photography dahil, di ba, in relation to criminal investigation, the so-called portrait parley. Di ba, ang portrait parley is yun yung pinatawag natin magshot photography. Yung pinipicturan po yung mga kriminal. Siya po yung nakaisip noon. Para kahit papano, for what reason, merong record purposes or for proper documentation na tinatawag. So, yun po yun. Then, the so-called scarcification. This is another earliest method that was introduced as a means of identification in the past. So, paano ginagawa ang scarcification? So, that could be cut by cutting some parts of the body in which leaving a scar and forming different kinds of design. However, this form of barbaric skin markings was considered as unreliable. Bakit po unreliable? Kasi nga, nangyayari is, po pwede po siyang palitan, po pwede po yung baguhin po yung scar marks na yun. Baguhin po yung itsura na yun. So that is scarcification po na nature. Then, another is the so-called photography. Photography is another me means of identification. Um, may, nalibang ata. Nalibang galit? So, as I've said, hindi rin talaga reliable sa photography dahil po pwede po siya, liguan na lang na may, uh, po pwede po siyang baguhin ura-orada or po pwede po siyang masira ura-orada. Punitin mo lang yung picture, di ba? Sira na. Right now, in digital na ano po, na area po or digital na, na stage of life natin, di ba? O pwede po natin sirain yung actual na tool o di kaya, di ba, burahin natin sa, sa ano natin, sa camera natin or kung ano yung ginagamit natin. Diyos ko, tingnan mo nga yung ginagawa ng bata ninyo. 
So, di ba, ganun ka, ano po, kabilis po yun. So, photography was also introduced in 1800s for the same purpose. Although the intention is for arti artistic purpose, but the European police found it significant for identification of criminals. Kaya nga, di ba, until today, we have the so-called mugshot gallery. Di ba? Sa mga police department, kahit nga sa mga train station, sa mga, ano po, sa mga airports, seaports, meron pong magshots gallery po. Para awal ang sambayanan na, okay, ito po yung mga itsura ng mga taong kriminal. At naglalaman din po siya ng pangalan at saka kung ano po mga kaso na commit na nung tao. Di ba? So, yun po yun in relation to photography. So, change may occur in both anthropometry and photography because of the principles that man continues to grow. So, body parts and description may be altered nor changed in the process of growing. So, that is true naman talaga. Di ba talagang magbabago kahit pa sabihin natin ang tao is nasa ano na po, age majority. Di ba? Hindi po talaga consistent siya kasi nga kahit na 18 years old yung tao, may growth pa rin yung nangyayari. ba diba? So, uh, body parts and description may be altered or change in the process of growing. So, this is the very reason why both failed as a kind of perfect man sa identification as compared to that of dactyloscopy. So, dactyloscopy, it is the identification of person through the examination, comparison, and classifications of fingerprints. So, yun po yung nangyayari na yung anthropometry at po, uh, photography, da, dahil nga po pwede po siyang mabago, so hindi po talaga siya nakapag-establish ng perfect, perfect man's identification po. So, Kaya nga, for how many years until today, we do acknowledge dactyloscopy as a means of reliable or invaluable means of identification of person. So take note that fingerprint system was known to be part of personal identification interest whose purpose is also for identification. So yun po yung nature ni fingerprint or ni dactyloscopy. Then, in terms of modern methods of identification, so, at present, we have voice identification system, the eye race of the eye identification, the, uh, the so-called odontology, and some medical related science like DNA had been included and become part in an attempt to identify man. So, all of these are of significant in scientific criminal investigation. So, in the recent attempts to identify and establish man's identification, criminalists term such study as biometrics po. Diba? Sa biometrics, hindi lamang fingerprint ang kinukuha. Even yung Irish of the eye identification, o di kaya yung voice identification system that is also considered as biometrics, mga kapatid. So when we see biometrics, that refers to the so-called statistical analysis or measuring or calculating specific parts of human body for identification. Diba? Like for example, sa COMELEC, kukuha ka ng ano or magpa-register ka, kinukuhan ka ng biometrics. Diba? So, yun po yung katawagan nun. And biometrics is one of the so-called modern methods of identification. Ngayon, centralized na po. Kahit na kumuha ka ng, ano, kumuha ka ng NBI or police clearance in Cebu or in any parts of the country, they can able to still identify such biometrics po. Diba? Kasi centralized po ang system. So in earlier civilization, branding and even meaning were used to mark the criminal for what he or she was. Diba? Alam natin ano yung branding or meaning. 
Huwag pwede natin nilagyan ng palatandaan yung tao na criminal siya in the past. Like for example, uh, pinatatuan siya ng, na, ano, na, or nilagyan siya ng natato, kundi markings sa katawan niya, patunay na uh, nagnakaw siya in the past. Like, or di kaya pinutol yung isang daliri niya. Palatandaan po yun na uh, nagiging magdanakaw siya. Diba? Yun yung mga barbaric na system. So the thief, well, uh, like for example, the thief was deprived of the hand which committed the thievery. Ancient Romans employed the tattoo needle to identify and pre prevent desertion of mercenary soldiers. Yun yung isa sa gamit ni tattoo before. Diba? Then, before the mid-1800s, law enforcement officers with extraordinary visual memories, so-called camera eyes, identified previously arrested offenders by sight. So, photography lessened the burden on memory but was not the answer to the criminal identification problem. But it has something to do with the so-called personal appearance that changed. So, Yun po yung nature ni camera eye. So, in relation to personal identification, it will somehow uh, correlates or it is somehow connotes to the so-called the law of multiplicity of evidence. So, ano po ba itong law of multiplicity of evidence? So, the law of multiplicity of evidence states that the greater the number of similarities, the greater the number of the probabilities for the conclusion to be correct. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? So, kung mataas po yung number of similarities, diba? so, napakataas po ng porsyento also na ang conclusion na binibigay ng expert is tama po. Diba? So, yun po yung uh, concept ng law of multiplicity of evidence po. Like, for example, in terms of fingerprint pattern. So, it was found out that the, the left uh, middle finger of an individual is the same with the, the impression found at the, the particular na hallway po or particular na, na place kung saan nakukuha yung uh, markings. Then, during the conduct of identification, napakadaming mga points of comparison na nagmamatch, na magkapareho. Diba? So, kaya nga sa, sa law of multiplicity of evidence, the more the merrier, the more the possibility na na yari yung ano, crime. And the more na mag-come up ng possibility na guilty or innocence po yung tao in terms of the applications of the law of multiplicity of evidence. So, that is the last na topic for week two. So, let us discuss for the week number three. So, week number three, as I've said, this pertains to the so-called forensic anthropometry. Diba? So, this is our next topic. So, in ano, in terms sa ano po sa syllabus. So, the next topic after the historical background or the basic concept of personal identification is the discussion in forensic anthropology. So, what are our objective for this particular topic? So, at the end of the day, diba, you will be able or expected to define and explain the fundamentals of anthropology and forensic anthropology. Another for you to trace the historical background of forensic anthropology. Next, identify and discuss the different methods used for forensic anthropometry. Uh, fourth, enumerate and discuss the subfield of forensic anthropology. And last but not the least, to uh, value the importance of forensic anthropology in personal identification. So let us start with the definition of the so-called anthropology. So pag sinabi po nating anthropology po, 
uh, it is defined as the scientific study of all aspects of human development and interaction. So, pag sinabi natin aspects of human development, di ba? It has something to do with the progression of a person and as well as the interaction, di ba? Uh, like, for example, na uh, in terms of uh, human remains, di ba? Somehow, na hukay na lang doon sa isang lugar yung labi or bungo ng victim. So, based on that bungo, we can able to identify such human. Diba? Yun yung isa sa uh, description or basic na objective ng so-called nating anthropology. So, anthropology, this pertains to systematic study of humankind. So, pag sinabi nating systematic study of humankind, di ba, isa itong credible na pag-aaral sa tao. Di ba, or pinagmulan ng tao, or saan ang gagaling yung tao. Di ba? So, commonly, anthropology was derived from the two Greek words. Anthro, which means man or human, and the apology uh, means study. And that is the reason why uh, for, uh, the so-called forensic anthropology is uh, tinatawag po natin uh, study of human. Kasi nga, yun po yung meaning nun. So, forensic anthropology is a specialized branch of physical anthropology, which is deals with the medical legal aspects of investigation. Diba? So, pag sinabi natin nga na na ano po deals with the with the so-called medical legal investigation it has something to do with identifications of the individual person so forensic anthropology this is a branch of science grew out of need for skeletal and anatomic expertise in criminal investigation so branch or a uh, branch of science that grew out of need for skeletal or anatomic na na ano po or uh, anatomic expertise in uh, relation to the solutions of crime or under criminal investigation per se. Then, forensic anthropology designed as the field of study that deals with the analysis of human skeletal remains resulting from unexplained death. So, mangyayari lamang po na inutilize natin yun si ano po, si forensic sciences po is uh, diba, parang uh, tinitingnan natin kung paano natin makikilala po si tao by means of the mga labi or mga buto-buto. So, forensic anthropology open done in a forensic or legal context. So, pag sinabi natin done in forensic or legal context, unang-una, they should abide what is the law on evidences. Di ba? So, uh, yun po yung context in terms of legal or forensic. Then, an applied science. Pag sinabi natin applied science, there is manipulations of the impositions of the so-called pain and penalty or the the... Uh, the solutions of the so-called crime, di ba? Yun naman talaga yung ultimate na objective natin to resolve the conflict. So, basically, forensic anthropology has five uh, sub-discipline. And these are the following. We have biological or physical anthropology, the archaeology, co cultural anthropology, the so-called uh, linguistics and applied anthropology po. So, yun po yung five sub-discipline ng tinatawag natin forensic science or dactyloscopy. So, what is the difference uh, of the so-called uh, general anthropology from forensic anthropology? So, the critical distinction made between a forensic anthropologist and a general 
uh, the so-called general instruction or the the so-called general concept of anthropologists is that the former focus on human identification. What does it mean? The so-called forensic anthropology, this or this is a field of study that focus on the identification of a person, most especially in terms of dead body or patay na katawan. Diba? So, uh, yun po yung pagkakaiba nilang dalawa. The general anthropology from forensic anthropo anthropology or anthropometry. So, forensic anthropology is the study of human remains. Pag-aaral sa mga labi or mga bungo. Diba? Yun po yung nature ni forensic anthropologists po. So, forensic anthropologists are educated in terms of uh, osteology or the body of the bones. Then, uh, what would be the focus on the so-called anthropologist? So, the main focus of a forensic anthropologist is to assess crime scene, uh, crime scene assess the skeletal remains, develop a biological profile, compile supportively, and documentation and testify in the provincial and federal courts. So, yun po yung pinaka-sentro ng study or pag-aaral ni ni, uh, ni forensic anthropologist po. So, a forensic anthropologist, their knowledge of the human body contributes to the, to the so-called outlet or the outcome of a uh, so-called death investigation by providing law enforcement agency with expert opinion and conclusion which ultimately aid in solving any given cases. So, di ba, ang tinatawag nating forensic anthropology, it will help us to come up with the actual na, ano po, na solutions of the crime. Kasi nga, siya po yung mga pamamaraan kung saan we can resolve a particular problem. Ay, mamay, di pa, di pa naug mo. Nag-huwat siya sa sakyan. Mm. So, what is the historical background of forensic anthropology? So, pag sinabi natin, ano po, ah, uh, Historical background, paano po ba ito nag-start? So in the year 1800, scientists began studying skulls, yung mga labi sa ulo ng tao. So they identify skeletal by, uh, which is badly decomposed or I, unidentified human remains for purposes of legal and human reasons. So it started during 19th century, popular uh, the, the so-called anthropometry or anthropology is popular, most especially during 1930. That is because of the World War II and the Korean War, na kung saan, di ba, maraming pong nagiging casualty sa, ano po na yun, sa period po na yun. Di ba, na kung saan, hindi na po ma maaninag yung mga, ano, uh, pagkakinlanlan ng tao or, uh, like for example dahil nga uh, natutuklap na yung mga mukha so it is difficult to identify a person kung walang itsura or diba uh, naagnas na po yung mga itsura like for example nga yung sinabi ko last time uh, yung victim ng disastrous event in Compostela Valley in Mindanao diba during the retrieval operation na kung saan uh, hindi na nila maaninag yung itsura ng tao. So, they come up with one of this particular method po. So, in Europe in the 1800s, scientists began using those uh, skull measurements to differentiate among individuals and establish differences between male and female anatomy, formation, aging, and fusing of bones were examined. So, they can able to identify kung ang labi or bungo galing sa mataas or sa ano or uh, parang 
para um, uh, nanggagaling sa sa it could be kung kaninong tao yan or uh, in terms of uh, races, we can still able to identify uh, by use of the so-called scan. Then, uh, in terms of historical background of the so-called uh, forensic anthropology, one of the, the case na uh, nirelate po siya is the Lewitt Gert murder case that was happening in the year 1897 wherein a man was accused of killing his wife and boiling down her corpse. Ibig sabihin, sinunog or uh, niluto niya. Diba? Yung, ano niya, yung mga labi ng asawa niya. So, uh, remains found after, or uh, the remains found appeared to fragments of his wife's skull, finger, and arm. So, nang dahil doon, he was charged with a murder of his own wife. So in the year 1932, the Federal Bureau of Investigation opened the first crime laboratory. Diba? So, ang FBI po, ang kauna-una ang nagbukas ng first crime laboratory. So when we see crime laboratory, what does it mean? Anybody from the group? Huh? Examination of evidence in laboratory po. The, pag sinabi natin crime laboratory, that is the laboratory wherein the examinations of evidence is conducted. Diba? So, sila po, ang, ang Federal Bureau of Investigation, ang kauna-unahang nagbukas ng crime lab na kung saan, right now, diba? we have intended na laboratory for such physical evidences. Doon lang po siya po pwedeng i-examine. Then, uh, part of the historical background is the Smithsonian Institute. So, Smithsonian Institute began working with the Federal Bureau of Investigation on identifying human remains. So, si Smithsonian Institute, uh, Sila po yung ano po, institution na kung saan nagkanda ng pag-aaral ng mga labi until this very days. Na, di ba, alam naman natin na napakadami pa pong victim ng World Trade Center attack na until today hindi po kilala dahil mga labi na lang po ang na ano, uh, na recover po. Diba? So, uh, part of the history that on World War II, soldiers killed during that period were identified using anthropological and osteological techniques. So, yun po yung uh, part ng history. So, in 1939, the Federal Bureau of Investigation published the book entitled Guide to the Identifications of Human Skeletal Material. That is one of the credible books pertaining to the study of forensic anthropology. Then in 1948, Mildred Truther organized a laboratory to examine the so-called bones of dead soldiers to identify them and return them to their families. Bakit? Diba? Para kahit pa paano makamove on yung mga pamilya, hindi sila naiwanan na nakahang up. Diba? Kahit pa paano, they can able to give the, the so-called decent na na ano po, na living doon sa ano nila, kapamilya nila. Then, uh, Trotter also created new structural charts and mathematical tables to aid in identification. And in the year 1979, the first anthropology textbook was written by Dale Stewart, which is a formal curator of anthropology at the Smithsonian Institution. So, meaning to say na uh, through the effort of uh, Dale Stewart, nagkaroon po sila ng one of the credible book or textbook in terms of anthropology na kung saan, di ba? 
uh, through the effort of this Dale Stewart po. Kaya until today, meron pong nagiging uh, pamantayan na libro kung saan kakayani namang uh, magbibigay sa atin ng uh, tinatawag nating guidelines on how the so-called uh, anthropology or anthropometry is conducted or anong kalagahan noon. Okay, forensic anthropologists can often answer many questions. And one of the basic questions that be able to answer by the forensic anthropologists are the following. Are the remains human? So, base sa pag-aaral, base sa pag-ano po, pag-examine, di ba? The forensic anthropologist able to identify that remains if that remains is babae or lalaki. Or that remains is Caucasian or Mongoloid or Negroid. Diba? Then another question, are the remains single individual or mixed remains of several individual? Kasi baka sumobra po yung limor bones na uh, chinichek. So, yun po yung isa sa common na problems na uh, sabi ko na masasagot po ng ano, forensic anthropologist. Then, another po, when did the death occur? ba diba? So, kailan po namatay yung tao? Diba? By identifying the human remains. What are the gender, age, and race of the individual? ba diba? In terms of gender, babae, lalaki. Diba? Anong edad? Bata, matanda. Anong lahi? Caucasian, Negroid, or Mongoloid? Tayo pa naman, belong sa Mongoloid. Hindi, hindi Mongoloid na, ano ha, na uh, tinatawag nating abnormal. So, ang Mongoloid na sinabi dyan is pertaining to the race or lahi ng tao. Then, what caused the death? Ano po ang sanin ng pagkamatay? Kaya nga in the conduct of legal uh, medicine or the so-called medical legal aspects of death, they can able to identify what would be the cause of death. Like for example, nalaso ng mangga. Diba? Pakikita po yun doon kung nalaso. <laughs> or... Uh, di ba, kung, kung ano yung sanhin ng pagkamatay. Then, what kind of death was it? It is homicide or a suicide and accident or natural death or is the cause is still under or undetermined? So, anong klaseng pagpatay ba? Sinasadya pa o hindi sinasadya? Di ba? So, that is another question na kung pwede pong i-establish ni ano, established ni anthropologist, di ba? Then, did the individual have any anatomical peculiarities or sign of disease or old injuries? So, makikita po yun. Like, for example, di ba? Merong, ano po, merong parang uh, nangyari doon sa, sa liver ng tao or uh, had something to do sa, sa bone niya. Di ba tinitrace nila yan ng mga anthropologists po? Okay, another uh, another question. Can individuals' height, body, weight, and physique be estimated? Yes. Di ba? Meron po mga pamamaraan na kung saan ma-identify po ang ano, tao in terms of the weight and physique of the person. So that is another na ano po na tanong. Then what bone show? So how persons live, di ba? Sa so, pamamagitan ng mga buto or labi natin, ma-identify natin paano ba namumuhay tong tao na to. Kung ano yan, strong bone yan or big bone yan, most likely itong taong to is sagana sa buhay dahil Marami siyang protein. ba? Diba? Na na-intake. So, isa po yun sa palatandaan in which we can able to identify how persons live. Saglit nga. Kukuha nga. Saglit lang, guys. 
Kasi nga, sobrang ano na nang likod ko. So, di ba, isa sa credible na pamamaraan po yung pag-identify ng bone kung paano nga namumuhay si tao. Di ba? So, sabi nga natin, in, in identifying the bone, di ba, we can able to know paano ba namuhay itong tao na to. So, sagana siya sa buhay kung maganda yung ano, structure ng bone niya kasi more on protein. Siguro masasarap yung kinakain or masustansya po yung kinakain or, or abundant po sa tinatawag natin milk that is one of the common source of protein. Then, debilitation illnesses such as rickets or the polio or health fractures. Diba commonly, ma-identify po yan sa bone. Diba? In terms of polio, alam nyo naman na diba yung mga may polio, usually hindi po yung nakakalakad kasi nga there is somehow uh, parang parang mali sa, sa structure ng bone niya. Diba? So, yun po yung isa sa uh, pinapakita ni na buto then right handed or left handed bakit ma-identify ang tao kung right handed or left handed kasi di ba pag ano to sa sa x-ray makikita natin na kung ano yung madalas ginagamit na kamay yun po yung mas malaki kaysa hindi masyadong ginagamit then Close to occupation. Kung, kung baga, pag sinabi natin close to occupation, mga hint kung ano po yung trabaho ng tao. Isa din po yun sa, sa ano po, ipapakita ni Bone. Di ba? Ang galing kung titingnan natin. Well, of course, maano lang po yan ha, Mapa, maipapakita or maipapaliwanag lang po yan ng mga expert on the field. Di ba? Yung mga anthropologists, for example, they can able to provide a certain close to occupation of a person in terms of examinations of the bone. Kasi yung iba, dahil nga super exposed sila sa, ano, super exposed sila sa, ano tawag ito, chemical, maybe medyo nag, na, ano, medyo lumambot yung mga buto nila, nagiging, Anong tawag dito sa Tagalog yung parang mabilis na lang ma ano masira naging malutong ba siya Aha. yes o, nagiging brittle yung bone nang dahil sa exposure to a certain chemical di ba so yun po yung isa sa ipapakita nila then what would be the role of the forensic anthropologist. So, commonly, they are the one who will recover human remains. Diba? Sabi nga natin, uh, nakikita natin sa, may mga documentaries nito ha, sa internet kung gusto nyo malaman kung ano talaga ang ginagawa ng mga forensic anthropologist. Sila yung mga naguhukay ng mga human remains. Diba? Uh, in, like for example, in terms of exhumation, Diba? Yung mga taong uh, nilibing na dahil hindi pa tapos yung kaso, uh, nag-request na i-exhumate yung dead body. Diba? Most likely, forensic anthropologist gumagawa nun. Identify human remains. That is one of their focus. Diba? They are the one who will identify human remains. And para din silang mga ano talaga, Uh, halos pareho ng trabaho ng medical legal expert. They are going to determine the time or the cause of death of a person by identifying the bones. Diba? So, this is the so-called recovering human remains. Diba? Yung mga nahuhukay or mga uh, binabao na tao, hinuhukay nila. Kung anong position nun, as much as possible, ganun din. Kasi lahat po yan na makikita, ma-observe nila, they are going to explain that bakit nagkaganon. ba? Diba? Then, locating human remains. So, uh, diba? 
pa pwede pa or ano-ano po yung mga pamamaraan kung bakit nalocate yung mga human remains. Pa pwede with the use of cadaver dogs. ba? Diba? Yung mga, uh, di ba yung mga aso, common kasi uh, 20 times ang ang uh, uh, modes of smell ng tao as compared sa, sa or as, as compared sa tao. Kaya nga, di ba, yung mga trained dogs, they can able to locate kung saan nililibing or saan uh, saan matatagpuan yung labi ng tao. So, uh, or it could be done through remote sensing methods. So, right now, uh, may mga aparatos na po na maka sense kung saan may labi ng tao, lalo na in the advanced countries such as US and European countries. ba? Kaya nga, sabi ko nga, until today, merong ano talaga, merong mga career ang mga anthropologists sa kanila. Kaya nga, yung sa atin, yung mga uh, scientists natin or anthropologists natin, ba? inuofera ng mga uh, napakalaking sahod para doon magtrabaho sa kanila. So, yun po yung isa sa way na paano ma-recover yung, yung uh, human remains. So, paano po nakakatulong ang anthropologists? So, anthropologists can help find small bones or bone fragments. So, kaya nilang i-construct kung ano yung construction ng body ng tao. Kasi most likely, they focus on the studying of bones. So, alam nila saan po ang formation niyan. Kahit maliliit na buto yan, they can be able to identify what type of bone yan or para sa ang parte ng katawan po yung bone na yan. They can be able to recover clothing and trace materials associated with the bones. And they able to prevent damage of bones and map the locations of bones and maintain the chain of custody on such particular evidence. ba? So, kaya nilang i-locate, kaya nilang uh, mag-maintain ng chain of custody on such evidence. Kasi nga, they are uh, expert on the field. So, in terms of identifying the remains, so, ito po yung mga factor na i-consider natin sa pag-identify ng human remains or yung mga labi. Diba? The age or edad ng tao. So, we look at bone length and the uh, bone fusion. So, titingnan natin kung uh, gaano kalaki or ano po yung uh, haba niya. Then, in terms of sex, differences in pelvis, skull, and femur bone. Diba? Yun yung isa sa mga major bones kung saan we can able to establish the identity of the sex of a person. The stature. Kung ang tao matangkad or panda. So, ma-identify yan sa size of the bones, particularly yung mga uh, primary bones, like for example, the femur, the pelvis, and the skull we can able to establish kung ang tao is nasa 6 foot siya or below. Ancestry, uh, in terms of race, diba? or in descendants, through the teeth or the skull. Ang ipin is some kind of a bone pa rin siya. So in determining the age, a forensic anthropologist can reasonably estimate an individual's age at the time of death by examining biological changes that took place during that person's life. So, hindi talaga uh, ano, hindi talaga yung exact but approximate only. Diba? Kahit approximate yan, kahit papano, malapit-lapit sa katotohanan yan. Diba? Yun po yung kagandahan noon. So the investigator can estimate most accurately. So when teeth are erupting, bones are growing and growth plates are forming and uniting. So closure of cranial tract or sutures in the skull is also an age indicator. Meaning to say, yung skull, yung head bone ng tao, that is one of the 
indicator wherein we can able to identify the age of a person. So, after 25 to 30 years of age, estimation becomes more difficult. Diba? Pag sobrang tagal na, mas mahirap nang i-identify ang age ng tao. Diba? So, this is how the skull is being used in identifying the age of a person. So, in determining the sex. So, in determining the sex, this is crucial when analyzing unidentified human remains. So, the OS pubis sacrum that uh, or so called in or in collaboration also or in coordination with the ilium of the pelvis are bones that have the most obvious differences between men and women. Alam naman natin na ang babae nakanganga. Diba? Whether we like it or not. Doon, yung bone within the pelvis area, yun po talaga yung binibigyan ng ano po, ng pansin or taken into consideration in the differences of the sex. Diba? Along with the shape of the skull also, malalaman din po yung itsura ng skull kung babae or lalaki yan. The shape of the mandible and the size of the occipital protuberance or the bump. Itong dito, kung saan uh, pinutuklap during autopsy, di ba? Ito yung madalas unang pinutuklap pagdating sa ulo po. So, yung tinatawag nating occipital protuberance or the bump at the back of the skull to determine male or female traits. Kasi nga, Magkaiba po yung formation nitong tinatawag nating occipital protuberance nung babae at lalaki. Diba? So, isa yan sa magiging palatandaan. So, titingnan natin na in general na anatomy of skeleton or the bones, there are 206 bones comprising the body. Diba? So, makikita ninyo yung bungo na yan. Kompleto po yan. So, man has 12 pounds or mga lalaki, 12 pounds na bones and the women are 10 pounds only. ba So, nakikita ninyo sa ano po, sa uh, presentation now is the skeletal anatomy. And try try to visualize because your activity or first activity is to draw the skeletal anatomy and you need to label such skeletal anatomy of a person. Visualize kasi nga, yan yung isa sa ano that you would uh, answer the question. But don't worry, uh, hindi ko naman ipapare sa within the day. Uh, that would be your assignment naman later. So what are the questions about skeletal remains? So these are the common questions na nire-raise. The age of person at the time of death. Tinatanong yan, ilang taon po ba yung tao during the time of death? Kaya nga tinitingnan yung sa, sa ipin. Kasi nga, pag bata, sobrang dikit-dikit yung ipin nun. Di ba? Pag ang, ang baby nagka-ipin, sobrang dikit-dikit. But, pag lumaki yung bata, meron niyang mga, ano, or pag adult ng tao, merong distance. Kaya nga, di ba? Right now, with the advanced technology in terms of dental, uh, ano po, works. Meron silang mga retainer, mga, mga braces, para gumanda yung formation ng ipin, di ba? So, tinitingnan, yung ipin, isa yun sa kind of bone na maka-identify kung ilang approximate age ng tao. Sex of the person. So, by identifying the skull and the pelvis of the person, then they want to know the race as well as the height or the stature of a person. Yun po yung mga questions about skeletal 
remains. So, in determining sex using the pay more bones. So, saan makikita ang pay more bones? So, most likely, nakikita siya sa legs at saka sa hands. Diba? Mga pay more bones to. Itong mga mahahaba. So, yun po yung mga buto sa katawan natin na kung saan kinukonsider in identifying the sex. Diba? So, uh, there is obvious sexual dimorphism in the human femur, the muscle attachment and the weight bearing surfaces as well as the markedly larger in males. So, references list were six determination from the, fe the femur na tinatawag. So, mangyayari po na ma-identify po yung babae at lalaki sa ano po niya. Yung parang, parang kung saan uh, nagkaroon ng branch yung bone natin. Diyan po nila tinitingnan as, as well as yung sa haba ng femur bone. Kasi most likely, pag babae, hindi talaga, kahit matangkad pa yung babae, hindi talaga magpapareho sa lalaki yung femur uh, bone natin. In terms of the uh, pelvis or yung sa pubic area banda, di ba? Mas wide po yung sa babae kaysa lalaki. Di ba? Dahil nga, sabi ko nga, dahil because sa babae, lalo na sa mga babaeng nagkaanak na dumadaan doon. Di ba? Mas lalong na na kanganga siya kaysa lalaki. 'Di ba? Mas naro ng 90 degrees yung lalaki kaysa babae po. Mas wide sa 90 degree angle po yung sa pelvic area po or the pelvic pelvis or the pelvic bone na tinatawag. In terms of subpubic angle, 'di ba? Females will always have a greater degree or greater than 90 degree angle po yung pelvis area niya dahil nga, di ba, because of our sex. Then, uh, in terms of asiatic notch, females more than 68 degree but the male less than 68 degrees po. So, yan po yung makikita, yung asiatic notch, yung naka-emphasize dyan sa baba. Then, the sacrum is straighter in women than in men. ba? Diba? Kung makikita natin yung pinupoint sa angle po, mas straight sa babae kaysa lalaki. Yung sacrum. Yung kung saan yung triangle or pyramid na shape na dinederive. Okay, in determining sex using the skull. So, ito po yung pagkakaiba ng babae at lalaki. Mas malaki po ang skull ng lalaki kaysa babae. In determining the height or the stature or the stature of a person. So, forensic scientists can estimate a person's stature or the height by examining one or more of the long bones. So, particularly the femur bone. By examining one or more of the long bone, men and women have different proportion of long bones to the total height. So, di ba? Uh, sasabihin nyo, eh, may maraming babae na matangkad pa sa lalaki. Yes, but in terms of the bone structure, malalaman po yung possible na height ng tao na yun. In determining the culture or the race of a person, there are three major anthropological racial groups uh, based on observable skeletal features. And these are the following. The Caucasian or the Caucasian, the Negroid or the Negros, and the Mongoloids were in our category, our racial group. Diba? So for Caucasian or Cau uh, Caucasian, they uh, belong yung mga European, yung mga Arabo, Middle Eastern, and the East Indian descent or descendants. Diba? Yung mga lahi na yun. Yun po yung mga Caucasian. Most of the time, mga white yan, white people yan. Diba? Then for the Negroid, 
we have the American, mga Aborigin and Melanesian descent or lahi. Diba? Ang mga Negroid, ito yung madalas mga blacks, mga malalaking tao. Diba? Then, Mongoloids, we have the Asian, Native American and the Polynesian descent. Ah, kagaya ng lahi ni Moana. Diba? Kung nanonood kayo ng Moana, Polynesian people sila. Diba? Parang nakatira sila somewhere in Hawaii or uh, yung mga ano mga island in uh, America. Diba? Yun po yung mga nature ng Mongoloids. So, uh, tayo, halos magkapariyo tayo ng picture sa kanila. So, ito po yung tingnan natin na ah, ang Caucasoid na race Ganito yung itsura. Tingnan natin kung sino ang may magandang skull. Negroid. Diba? Mas malalaki po yung ano nila, structure nila. Then, the, tingnan nyo ang mongoloy. Diba? Mas maliliit yung skull as compared with other po or others. So, in identifying the remains, ah, uh, Individuality may be determined. So, paano po natin ma-identify or ma-determine yung individuality of a person? So, we can able to identify from surgical procedure or di kaya from broken bones. Diba? We can identify na, okay, itong tao na to nag-undergo ng certain operation. Like for example, as you can see in the first figure, diba? meron pong nakalagay na stainless. Di ba? Nakalagay na stainless sa sa bone. Like for example, my father dahil uh, nung maliit ako, mga 5 years old ako, yung tatay ko nabundol ng ano, nabundol ng motor. Motor na nasa highway buti nga uh, buhay pa. Uh, dapat putulin yung ano niya, putulin yung paa niya, pero hindi siya pumayag. Sabi niya, kakayanin niya ng, ano, ng operation. So, nag-undergo siya ng operation uh, until now, merong stainless sa, ano niya, sa legs niya. Pero hindi naman naka-affect sa pag-walk niya. Pero pag during malamit ang panahon, uh, nararamdaman niya masakit, kumikirot. Kasi parang lumamig ata yung stainless, kaya siguro kumikirot. So, ganyan yung ma-identify natin yung tao through that. And uh, sa pangalawang ano, sa pangalawang picture, di ba, merong broken bones po yung tao. So, we can able that uh, to identify the remains of that person. Then, determining the time of death. So, In determining the time of death, anthropologists is helpful if subtitles have decomposed. Bakit? Mas madali nilang ma-identify yun pag totally bones na lang. So if, if subtitles is present, identification can be done by the pathologist. Diba? Yung mga medical legal expert or mga doctor that is uh, focus their studies on yung mga ano po mga subtitles na nakukuha like for example 'di ba uh, hindi pa totally na naaagnas yung mga laman so kinukuha yun doon nila i-identify yung identity of a person or uh, through that subtitle they can able to establish the time of death Uh, dahil, di ba, in terms of medical legal, alam ko meron kayong uh, legal medicine ngayon, criminal investigation, or special crime investigation with legal med, di ba, meron kayo niyan ngayon. So, isa sa tinitingnan ng medical legal expert is yung putrefaction na tinatawag. So, sa putrefaction po, like for example, naaagnas na po yung Uh, katawan ng tao. Ma-identify nila kung yan uh, within 24 hours, 48 hours, or uh, one week na po namatay yung tao because of the soft tissues na present. Diba? 
ka or kakayanin lang ma malaman kung uh, yung approximate na time of death ma establish ng mga pathologists also pathologists are mga doctors din yan na expert on this particular field then in determining the cause of death di ba so pwede pong ma-identify uh, kaya nga sa sa kandak ng autopsy po kahit anong klasing crime yan binubuksan ang ulo ng tao yung skull kasi po pwede kasi doon makikita ano po ba ang uh, nagiging sanhi ng pagkamatay so like for example if the cause of death is through a bone cut or yung tinatawag natin sharp force trauma so makikita mo na diba merong na hiwa or merong nagcrack na bone diyan or blunt force trauma broken bones or yun nga nagka-crack din anti-mortem versus the post-mortem breaks so sa anti-mortem bago siya namatay and nung namatay siya like for example yung nakat or naputol or na break yung bone di ba may establish nila yan na Okay, itong ano na to, itong crack ng bone na to, is nangyari to nung namatay na siya. Siguro, di ba? Most likely, ito yung sanhi nung death. Dahil nga, nag-crack, nagkaroon ng, yan, ng hemorrhage inside. So, yun. Yun yung tinitingnan nila in terms of bone. So, the bones were interested in this particular na parts. So, meaning to say, if we will identify the identity of a person, we need to consider all the points that is being circled with red color. Yan po yung mga major, major bones na kung saan we can able to identify the age, the sex, the race, and other factors pertaining to a person. So, yan po siya. So, what are the terminologies that we should know in terms of uh, forensic anthropology? So, these are the following. Proximal versus distal. This, these are the, uh, ano po ha, technical terms na ginagamit under the field of forensic anthropology. So, in terms of proximal and distal, Diba? Towards the point of, of attachment or it could be mean away from the point of attachment. So, kaya nga pag nagbasa tayo ng, ano po, ng report from the forensic anthropologist, these are the common terminologies that we encounter. And that is the reason why we need to know what would be the meaning of that. Pag sinabing proximal or distal, di ba? Yan po yung point na kung saan uh, nag-attach yung bone from other bone or it could be established the ano po, uh, yung tinatawag nating measures or the place of the bone from each other bone. Then the superior and inferior. So pag sinabi natin superior, that is towards the head. Pag inferior, always remember that is towards the feet, pababa. Superior, di ba? Superior, pataas. Inferior, pababa. So, fine and prone. Lying on the backside or lying on the belly side or naka, naka, dapa. Pag, ang prone, naka, dapa. Yan. Pag supine, naka, tihaya. Di ba? Anterior versus posterior. The prone side and the back side. Very common siya na terminology pag sa skull. Sa skull na, ano po, na bone. Okay, in terms of physiology of bones or the basic nature or the basic component of bone. So, bones are held together by so-called so -called cartilage. Yung white na nasa dulo ng mga joint, di ba? Uh, have you observed yung sa manok? Uh, like for example, yung drumstick o di kaya yung pakpak, di ba? 
Pag binalata natin siya, tinanggal natin yung balat, pati yung laman, di ba, ma- matira yung buto. Yung buto na nag na dudugtong, di ba, merong, yung buto na yun, merong white na nagko-cover sa bone. Yun po yung cartilage. Then, the ligaments, bands that connect two or more bones together. Yung parang mga litid or mga ugat-ugat na matitigas. Diba? Yun yung ligaments. Then, the tendons connect muscle to the bone. Diba? Alam natin na yung the, the outside co- covering of the bones, that that is where the tendons found. Siya po yung connector ng laman at saka ng buto. So, until about 30 years of age, bones increase in size. Sipin mo ako right now, hindi na hindi na lalaki yung bone ko. Kasi nga, malamang sa malamang, I am above 30 years. Pero kayo, meron pang pag-asa. Kaya nga, uh, right now, di ba, yung mga kulang sa height, mag-ano kayo, mag-unat-unat kayo. And that is true, ha? Unat-unat kayo at the same time, eat and drink uh, food and drinks that more on protein. Kasi nga, meron pa talagang pag-asa. Kasi after 30 years old, the deterioration of the bone will be slowed. Diba? Hindi na po, ano talaga, hindi na po tutubo or hindi na po siya lalaki. Diba? Have you observed yung bata pag ang bata, pinakain natin ang pinakain ng mga pagkain na more on protein, most likely, di ba, tatangkad sila. Eh, yung ibang bata nga, ako nga, ano, nakita ko yung mga pamangkin ko, my God, that was, ano lang, three years ago, parang, ang liit lang nila. Ngayon, ang binata na, lumalaki na rin yung katawan kasi nga, lalo na sa probinsya, nagiigid sila ng tubig o di kaya kung anong mga binubuhat nila. Sabi ko, ba, binatang binata na, nakakatuwa na tingnan kasi pumuporma na yung katawan, lalo na yung iba kong pamangkin. Mga ano din, ah, hindi nga malakas masyadong kumain dahil ayaw daw tumaba. Ha? May mga ganung ganap sila. Eh, makikita mo na dahil right now, pagandahan ng katawan daw ko, no? Sige, bahala kayo sa buhay nyo. Then, may tinatawag tayong osteobiography. So, ano po itong osteobiography? So, osteobiography, it tells much about a person through the study of the skeleton. Diba? May, madalas ay makarinig, osteoporosis. Diba? Yung osteoporosis, that is a condition or, or a disease. Considered siya as disease kasi nga yun yung pagkakuba nung, ano, nung tao, lalo sa mga kababaihan, pag, lalo na pag nag-acquired na ng edad. Diba? So, uh, ito po yung pag-aaral na kung saan focus on the skeleton of the body. So, the bones of a right-handed person Uh, for example, would be slightly larger than the, mo- the the bones of the left arm. Yun yung sinabi ko kanina. Kung right-handed ka, mas ano to, mas malaki. Larger than the uh, left arm mo dahil hindi masyadong nagagamit. Hindi talaga yan pantay. Forensic scientists realize that bones contain a record of or that bones contain a record of the physical life. So, naniniwala ang mga forensic scientists na ang mga labi natin talagang nag, ano po siya, uh, nagsasaad po or nag, nagkukontain a record ng buhay natin. So, that is the nature of the bones. So, uh, in terms of the career, so informative features about the age, the sex, race and stature of individuals based on bones is based on biological differences between sexes and races. So, commonly, we all know that males are generally taller and more robust, unlike sa babae, as well as differences due to ancestry, wherein we try to consider the 
certain skeletal features of the skull of a person. However, it is imprecise because so much human variation exists and because racial differences tend to homogenize as population interbreed. Diba? Pag sinabi natin na homo homogenize, dahil, di ba, like for example, Pinoy na lahian. Dahil, di ba, alam naman natin na maraming Pinay na gusto ng foreigner, na gusto ng mga malalaki na tao, di ba, na matatangkad ang hay. Makikita mo, pag, uh, lalo na sa inyo, dyan, somewhere in Pampanga, ang Hiles in, anong tawag nito? Ano yung red district ninyo? Ah, uh, Yung may sa Sambales area, anong ang tawag doon? Yung maraming foreigner? Sa Olunga po. Olunga po nga. Diba? Diyos ko, ang liit-liit nung Pinay, ang kasama niya parang triple sa height niya. Sabi ko, oh my God. Tapos alam naman natin kung ano ang, ang characteristics ng mga foreigner na yan. Uh, diba? Uh, sabi ko, kaya-kaya. Uh, ano lang, mapaglarong isip lang. Kaya-kaya niya yan, kalaki-laki niyan. Tapos parang, di ba, sa laki nung kasama niya, ewan ko na lang kung hindi, ako sa bagay, flexible naman. <laughs> Matatawa lang ako na, oh my God, yun yung kasama niya. <coughs> One time, uh, prior the pandemic, di ba, na bukas pa yung mga, mga hotel. In Makati, like for example, nag-check in din kami one December uh, Christmas time dahil parang ano yun ng partner ko with uh, the children na nag-hotel. Nag Nag-wonder ako, anak ba niya or jowa niya? Kasi medyo may edad na talaga yung lalaki tapos yung kasama niya. Sabi ko, eventually I realized na mm, okay. Jowa niya, parang kung titingnan ko, wala pang 18 years old yung babae, parang hanggang kulang-kulang sa kulang-kulang sa kilikili lang niya yung babae. Oh my God! Anong, ang laki ng bulto ng katawan nung kasama. Sabi ko, okay. Eh, since dalawa lang sila, di ba, dalawa lang sila for a particular room. So, sabi ko, kaya-kaya niya yan. <laughs> Yung problema ko sa, sa nakita ko. Eh, wala tayong magagawa. Ganon talaga. Di ba? Kaya nga, uh, nalalahian. At the same time, uh, vice versa lang din naman nangyayari. Pero, di ba, pag ang Pinoy, hinahaluan ng foreigner, di ba, ano ang nangingibabaw? Pinoy ba na blood? Di ba, hindi. Mas nangingibabaw yung features ng foreigner. Di ba? Like, for example, uh, yan, mga artista, sila sila Asunta de Rossi, sila Ann Curtis, sila ano, di ba dahil mga foreigner yung mga ano nila, tatay nila. Kaya ang gaganda, sobrang ganda nila. Kasi nga, nag, na, nag-prevail yung foreign na ano po, features as mixed with the Filipino na features po. Yun yung madalas na mag exist Diba? So, still, differences do exist that the more features to, uh, for you to survey, the more precise your conclusions will be. Kaya nga, on the part of the, the so-called forensic anthropologists, they try to dig deeper na, ano po, na, na mga, mga points for comparison. Tinitingnan kasi nila yung pagkakaiba. Lalong-lalo na doon sa mga factors na minimension natin such as the age, sex, the statures, and the rights. So, ano po ang madalas nating maunawaan or ma-learn ma on the so-called anthropology or the so-called forensic anthropology po? So, we can able to determine the sex of a person by using the pelvis bone and the skull. Yan yung common na type or parts of the bone ng tao na binibigyan natin ng, ng considerations in identifications of the sex. Determinations of the race, yung skull, 
Kasi, uh, most likely, yung protruding na, ano pa, na features ng skull ng tao, isa din yun sa patunay or isa din po yun na makapag-able to identify the race of a person. The approximate uh, age, the growth of long bones, yung femur bones or yung other uh, long bones ng tao. The same with the approximate stature or the height. Diba? Then, in terms of post-mortem or anti-mortem injuries. So, po, pwede din po nating uh, malaman po kung ang tao, meron po siyang mga karamdaman prior sa kamatayan niya or nung namatay siya. Diba? Makikita po yun. Na, ah, namatay yung tao, ba bago siya namatay, clear po yung uh, body structures niya or bony structures niya. But nung namatay siya, ito yung nangyayari. So, malamang sa malamang, because of these broken bones, ito po yung sani or cause of death. Postmortem interval or yung tinatawag natin time of death. Diba? That is also another na lessons that we can learn out of the bone. So, determinations of sex from the pelvis, alam naman natin na mas ma, uh, malaki yung uh, angle or yung uh, distance ni pelvis bone sa babae from lalaki. Diba? Yung arch ng pubic area or pubic arch is different from male from female. So, diba? Sa, sa one ang tinitingnan yung pubic arch niya sa two yung pelvic brim niya yung case parang casing ng babae at lalaki na pelvis bone then yung three the pelvic inlet di ba mas ano po makikita natin na mas malapad po yung agiwang sa babae kaysa lalaki po di ba in determinations of the sex, so pelvis, which is the uh, best view for the pelvis bone of the male and female. So, di ba? Females have a broad shovel like ilium, yung uh, paloob na part ng, ng pubic uh, bone. Then, uh, females have a flexible pubic sympathies. So, pag sinabi natin pubic sympathies, yung giwang, uh, alam naman natin na ang babae, babae is ano talaga, di ba? Uh, flexible yan. Yun nga yung sabi ko, in example kanina sa babae na pinay, kasama po rin or nagkasya pa rin, di ba? Then, in determinations of the sex, the, we need to consider the subpubic angle, the pubis body width, Yung lapad, the greater shatic notch, yung ano niya, yung parang uh, curve na line niya on the, ano po, the area ng uh, pelvic bone. Then the pelvic cavity shape, kung ano itsura ng cavity shape nung ano niya, nung pelvis bone niya. So, ma-identify po yung babae at lalaki for that. In determinations of the skull, diba? skull is somehow called as cranium. So, crest and ridges more pronounced in males A, B, C. Diba? Makikita natin na iba po yung lalim ng uh, crest and ridges ng lalaki kaysa babae. Diba? Chin significantly more square in males than the female. Diba? Square tie yung sa lalaki kaysa babae. Yung sa babae parang patulis or patusok. Diba? Then, the mastoid process wide and robust in males uh, unlike sa ano po, sa female. Diba? Then, forehead slopes more in males than the females. Diba? Yung parang mas malapad ang sa lalaki kay sa babae, yung forehead, yung noo. Diba? Tingnan nyo, ang noo sa, sa babae parang protruding. Sa lalaki is 
uh, slope type. Yung parang, kaya nga yung mga oclaves, <laughs> di ba? Mga kalbo, halatang emphasize yung ano nila dito. Lalo na pag sobrang, uh, just like my husband, uh, Vin Diesel, klarong-klaro yung ano niya, di ba? Uh, yung ano niya sa noo niya. Okay, in the six determination based on the skull, this would be the traits between the male and the female. So, in terms of the upper age of, of eye orbit, yung bilog nung, ano, yung sa mata, di ba? Sa, sa male, blunt po yun. Sa female, medyo sharp, di ba? Then, another, uh, the shape of the eye orbit, uh, commonly, round sa babae, square sa lalaki. In terms of zygomatic process, it is not expressed beyond external auditory mitos, but sa lalaki po, commonly expressed beyond external auditory mitos yung papunta dito sa, ano po, sa, sa ears na banda. Then, the neutral crest or occipital bone dito sa likuran, Pag babae, smooth. Diba? Yung dito sa likuran ng babae. Sa lalaki, round and bumpy. Medyo nakaprotrude yung sa likuran na part of the uh, skull. External occipital protuberance generally absent sa, ano, sa babae kasi nga medyo smooth siya. Then, sa lalaki, generally present po yan kasi nga rough and bumpy nga po. The frontal bone, ito, sa harap, round or globular for the female, sa lalaki, slow and slanting, kaya nga sloppy uh, forehead. Then, the mandible shape, rounded or V-shape, dito ha, itong mandible shape sa, sa babae, di ba kanina, parang pahaba or patusok. Sa lalaki, square or U-shape. Then the ramus of mandible, dito pa rin yan. Slant sa, ano, sa babae, straight lang sa lalaki. So yun po yung uh, factor or the traits in terms of uh, determinations of sex for the skull. So kung ang femur bone ang gagamitin or yung mga longer bone, normally the long bones alone are not used alone to estimate gender. So mahirap po siya. However, if these bones are the only one present, there are characteristics that can be used for sex determination still. So, for example, maximum length of humerus in female is 305.9 mm, while it is 339.0 mm in males. So, mangyari po lamang kung wala pong ibang option na bone, Ito lamang longer bones or mga femur bones or yung tinatawag nating humerus bone ang natira lang, po pwede naman. Kasi nga, ang titingnan dyan yung size. So commonly, sa babae, hanggang 305.9 mm lang. As compared sa lalaki na merong 339.0 mm in size. So yun po yung kagandaan nun. In determinations of the age of uh, the skull or from the skull. So, makikita natin kung bata or matanda po yan. ba? Sabi nga natin kanina, by about age 30, uh, may mga pagkakaiba na dahil hindi na po uh, nag-grow yung bone, hindi na nag, ano, nagbabago. So, by about age 30, the sutor at the back of the skull will have closed. So, pag 30 years old na, ba? yung likuran ng part ng ulo natin, mawawala po yung ano, giwang doon or parang line doon. Magsasarado po siya. By about age 32, the sutor running across the top of the skull back to the front will have close also. ba Yung papunta dito, magko-close yan. By about age 50, the sutor running side to side over the top of the skull near the front will have close. Itong dito, pa-cross, magsasarado po yan. Diba? So, in determinations of age from bones, age 0, 5 
diba? teeth are best na i-consider. So forensic odontology is very much applicable to that. So we can say that BB teeth are lost and adult teeth erupt in predictable pattern. Diba, sabi ko nga kanina, pag bata, salansan na salansan niyang ipin, lalo na pag bagong kakompleto niyan. Diba? Mangyayari lamang po na mag-iba po yung structure ng teeth ng tao, lalo na, diba, na alam natin na matatanggal pa yung BB teeth. Teeth, mapapalitan ng permanent teeth. Pag hindi natanggal, di ba, bigla na lang ano, tumubo yung kapalitan. Pag hindi natanggal kasi yun, kaya nga nagkasungki-sungki yung ipin ng bata. Di ba? Kaya nga pumapangit. Kaya nga, as much as possible, kailangan mabunot yun agad para hindi po magbabago po yung structure ng teeth. Di ba? At the age of 6 to 25, the epiphyseal uh, fusion or the fusion of bone ends to bone shaft. So the epiphyseal fusion varies with sex and it's typically complete by the age of 25. So yung ano, permanent teeth, di ba? Usually, uh, mag, ano yun, makukompleto yun at the age of 25, di ba? At that age, lalabas na po yung mga wisdom tooth natin. So, Pangkompleto po yun. By the age of 25 to 30, yun po yung mag-start na talagang mag-harden na po yung ipin po ng tao. At age 40 and above, basically wear and tear on bones or the periodontal disease, arthritis, breakdown or pelvis and the likes would occur. ba? Diba? Kaya nga kanina, uh, kaka early 40s lang naghahanap na ako kasi pag matagal pag matagal na nakaupo uh, dahil nag-undergo ako na ang CS so kuminsan sumasakit yung ano dito sa likuran na bone ko uh, hanggang sa harap pababa kaya kailangan kong uh, tumayo mas okay sa akin na tumayo uh, kasi sanay, di ba, during sa face-to-face -face setup, nakatayo talaga ng uh, almost uh, siguro uh, 9 hours or 10 hours a day. Mas malupit pa sa sales lady sa mall pag nagnaturo. Kasi bihira lang ako ng turo na nakaupo sa table, lalo, lalo na pag sa classroom. Kasi naiikot ko yung buong classroom pag ano naman, pag face-to-face -face tayo. Kaya walang nakakatulog. <laughs> Pag dito sa online class, I doubt. Kasi hindi ko kayo nakikita. Pero kung naka-zoom sana tayo, nakikita ko kayo. ba diba? Ito yung disadvantage ng GMIT. Then, it can also use ossification of bones such as those found in the cranium or in the skull. ba diba? We can still identify the age of a person through identifying the skull or the cranium of the person. So, in age determination, di ba? So, that is the use of teeth. So, tingnan ninyo. Anyway, we will reinforce the discussion on this on the forensic odontology course or rather topic, subject, part of personal identification techniques. So, di ba? Yan po yung buong ipin ng tao. Take note ha, hindi kayo magiging pulis or hindi kayo tatanggapin pagkulang yung ipin ninyo. Kahit isa. Okay lang kung hindi pa lumabas ang wisdom tooth sa application mo. Pero si tooth, yung mga primary tooth po or teeth po dyan, kailangan po buo po yan. ba diba? So, yan po ang itsura ng ipin ng tao. Di ba pag bungo na tayo, parang puro ipin yung nasa bibig banda. So, yan po ang talagang whether we like it or not, kahit gaano ka pa ka or kaganda, pag nagiging bungo tayo, pare-pareho tayo ng mga itsura. O di ba? Kaya confident ako na maganda ako o bahala ka sa buhay mo kung hindi ka nagagandahan sa akin. Di ba? Kasi at the end of the day, pag na natanggal na itong ano, outside na appearance or outlook natin, ganyan na lang natitira sa atin, uniform tayo. Di ba? So, 
Yung tinatawag natin epiphyseal fusion, the figure below R of the epiphysis of the femur of thigh bone, yung sa, sa legs. So the bull end of the joint or the joint by a layer of cartilage. Di ba yung ano na yan, yung bilog sa dulo na yan. Bahala kayo kung anong mga naiisip ninyo. Kung sobrang likot ng utak ninyo, may madiderive kayo na ano niyan, na appearance niyan. So, okay lang yan. As a normal person, di ba, gumagana yung mga utak natin for some na visualization. So, the lines in the illustrated image in one show the lines of layer of the cartilage between the bone and the epiphysis. So, the lines are very clear on the bone when a person, either male or female, is not out of the puberty. Di ba? Yung naka-blue na line. Tinitingnan po dahil yan po yung isa sa pag-identify ng age nung tao. Kung bata pa ba siya or jutanders na ba siya. Diba? So, take note that the lines that are very clear on the bone when a person, either male or female, is not out of puberty. Ibig sabihin, hindi pa po siya nakaalis sa kabataan. Diba? Pag, sabi nga namin natin kanina, pag tumanda, mawawala po. Diba? Kaya sa figure 2, you see no visible lines anymore. This person is out of puberty. Ibig sabihin, matured na po siya. So the epiphysis have fully joined when a person reaches adulthood. That closing of the ability to grow taller or in the case of the arms, to grow longer. Diba? Ganyan po ang nature ni bone. Diba? Uh, Napakaswerte natin dahil part 2 ng pinag-aralan natin. Kasi itong mga ganitong bagay is, di ba, nalalaman lang to ng mga medical courses na students. But on our field, kahit papano, pero wag kayong mangarap na sobra-sobra sa, sa diniscuss natin. Because this is not our major. Di ba? Bakit? Uh, ano lang tayo? Basic lang tayo. Alam natin na o pwede tayo maka-establish ng identity ng tao in relation to criminal investigation because of the bone. O, di ba? Yun lang tayo. O pwede naman, kung gusto mo mag-focus, mag, mag, after this program, mag-enroll ka ng additional na ano po program. So, these are the epiphyseal fusion or the your general guide. So, you can have the label here. Di ba? So, makikita ninyo na kung ano po yung mga ano niya, mga age bracket po niya. ba diba? So, yan po. In determination of race, so it can be extremely difficult to determine the true race of a skeleton for several reasons. Una, first, forensic anthropologists generally use three race model to categorize skeletal traits. The Caucasian, such as European, Asian, or yung Mongoloid. Kaya para sa akin, ha, Mongoloid talaga yung, yung category ng Asian. Pero po, pwede naman natin kasing tawagin, di ba? Sa, sa uh, international standards, Asian naman ang ginagamit nila. Kasi nga, parang ang sagwa kasi pag Mongoloid ang i-ano natin, i-term natin. Then for the Negroid, Diba? Most likely, pinalitan nila ng African na origin po or race po. Uh, that is intended for African and the West Indian. Although there are cer certainly some common physical characteristics among these groups, they are not all individuals have skeletal traits that are completely consistent with their geographic origin. So, yun po yung isa sa rason kung bakit napaka- hirap pong i-identify ang totoong uh, race or lahi ng tao in terms of identifications of the human remains. So second, people of mixed racial ancestry are common. Oftentimes, a skeleton exhibit characteristics of more than one racial group and does not fit neatly into the three race model. Yun yung isa sa problema. Kasi nga, diba, nag-establish na, they, they arrive with Three race model only. But alam natin, homogeneous by nature. Diba? 
na ano tayo nalahian ng nalahian kaya nga mahirap i-establish di ba alam natin ang Asian people particularly Filipino people di ba hindi tayo katangkaran pero right now my god ang dami na pong matatangkad na lalaking Pinoy di ba kasi nga nalahian nga lalo na pag nalahian ng negro ang Pinoy Diyos ko, ang laking bulas ang katawan nung, nung bata. ba? Diba? Also, the vast majority of the skeletal, skeletal indicators used to determine race and are non-metric traits which can be highly sub- subjective. O ba? Diba? Pag sinabi natin highly subjective, hindi talaga siya determined. Hindi talaga siya exact. Hindi talaga siya consistent. ba? Diba? Despite these drawbacks, Race determination still viewed as a critical part of the overall identifications of an individual remains. So, still, kahit mahirap, need pa rin siya, di ba? So, these are the features of white, Asian, and African skull or cranium. So, features of the skull used in race determination. So, kinakailangan, titingnan yung nasal index, yung butas ng uh, ilong sa ano di ba yung sa uh, ano natin sa skull so the ratio of the width of the height of the nose multiplied by 100 pala sila kung paano nila yan i, i times di ba then the nasal spine ito feel the base of the nasal cavity on either side of the nasal spine then do you feel sharp Ridges or the nasal ceiling. Diba? May dito. Makikita natin. So, do you feel sharp ridges or the nasal ceiling? Rounded ridges or no ridges at all? Or the nasal gathering? So, prognatism, extended lower jaw. Uh, isa sa pamantay natin to identify shape of eye orbits. Either uh, round or squarish round. Diba? So, may identify natin din siya through that. In terms of the nasal ceiling and gathering. So, diba? Talagang walang walang maganda or pogi pag ano na lang, bungo na lang. Uh, buto na lang ang natira. For the Caucasian, diba? Alam natin, ang mga Caucasian people, talagang ang gaganda ng mga itsura madalas. Pero pag nabungo, oh may ganda pa ba dyan? Pare-pareho na lang tayo, diba? So, for the Asian, ito yung sa atin. Usually, eh, magiging ganito ang itsura ng mga bungo natin. ba? For the African, yan. Kung titingnan natin, medyo kahit papano, mas maganda-ganda konti yung skull natin. No? Kaysa African, ang lalapad. In terms of the height, the stature. So, long bone length, the femur or the tibia, the humerus is proportional to the height. So there are tables that forensic anthropologists use, but this also depends to some extent on race. Kasi nga, alam naman natin, sabi ko nga kanina, magkakaiba po yung height ng tao. So since this is inexact, ibig sabihin, not exact talaga. So, uh, ang mangyari, there are confidence intervals assigned to each calculation. Kahit pa paano naman, Diba, sabi nga kanina na kung wala namang ibang alternatives, wala nang ibang available na bungo, wala, mapililitan sila to use the table intended for the measurement of the bones of the ano po, the long bone length of the body. Diba? For example, imagine from a skull and pelvis you determine the individual was an adult Caucasian. The height would be determined by the humerus length which is 30.5. 8 centimeter in long in height 2.89 uh, plus 78.10 centimeter then uh, meron niyan siya yung plus and uh, uh, minus dyan most likely dyan magpo-fall yung ano na yan yung sizes niya then uh, for more uh, tables you can ask the google Meron yan. Uh, nung nagkanda ako na research kasi nga 
Uh, this is implemented 2019. Itong curriculum na to. Kasi before, wala. So, nagkakandak ako na research. So, makikita mo yung table. Pero, hindi ko na pinag-aksaya ng pansin kasi nga, literally, hindi naman din natin to gagamitin eh. For purposes of learning lang naman. Pero, as I said kanina, if you want a reinforcement or additional knowledge regarding this matter, you can exert effort in conducting research in the Google. Diba? So, other information we can get from the bone. So, una, evidence of trauma. Diba? Like, for example, yung figure number one sa pag. Diba, makikita natin na, ah, yan ang cause of death. Most likely, natamaan niya ng bala or ng something na nagpa, ano, na nagkaroon ng hole sa ulo. Evidence of post-mortem trauma here, the head of the femur was chewed off by carnivore. Diba? Ganyan yung itsura. So, uh, nagka-experience ng trauma yung victim. Then, signs of wearing an anti-mortem injury. Diba? Pinakita ko na yan kanina. So, occupational stress wears... Uh, the bone at joint. So, makikita natin na, like for example, itong sa first figure, uh, most likely, yung tao na yan is nagsisuffer ng arthritis or any disease in relation to bone. Diba? Parang, na, dahil sa pagkakaskas, kaya nagaganyan yung ano niya, yung itsura niya. Diba sa arthritis, kaya masakit siya kasi nagkakaskasan at wala na pong, parang wala na pong uh, oil or wala na pong, uh, anong tawag dito? Yung parang uh, liquid yung ano natin, yung joint natin, eh, tumitigas na siya. Kaya pag nagkakaskasan, ang sakit na po. Yun po yung kaso sa mga nagka-arthritis or kung ano yung sakit sa bone. And itong pangalawang picture, surgeries or healed wounds aid in identification. So, di ba, ma-identify na nag-undergo ng operation yung tao because of that. So, these are the sources uh, and the websites na ginagamit ko for the presentation. So, uh, mga possible na ano talaga to, na website na kung saan you can able to derive a lot of information pertaining to forensic anthropology po. Anyway, you can able to access all these things because uh, of the online, di ba? So, may mga tanong po. May mga katanungan po ba? That ends with our presentation. So, tapos natin, di ba? May mga tanong po regarding the topic that had been discussed a while ago. Ha? Any clarification? Any clarification po? Ya po, ma'am. O, bakit pinawana ni, ano? Hmm. Uy, bakit nyo siya tinatawanan? Si, sino ba ang tinatawanan ni Miss Pineda? At saka ni, Mi, ni Mr. Manalili, ha? Ah, yung kanina lang po yan, ma'am, dun po sa discussion. Flexible po, ma'am. <laughs> yung kung kanina sa, sa sinasabi nyo. Kayo, ha? Ma, talagang malikot ang mga otak. Okay lang yan. Isa lang ang patunay yan. Mga normal kayong tao. O, diba? Yes po. Siyempre, ano ma'am? Ha? <laughs> ano? Da, malaking buto, no ma'am? Buto na tao. Yung bones. Ala, bisaya ka. <laughs> May background ka. Ha? May background ka sa, sa bisaya. <laughs> Alam ko yung sinasabi mo, umayos ka. <laughs> Mga well, ano po, kapampangan yung buto. Bones. Talaga lang ha. The way na sinabi mo yun, ah, okay, sige, granting na kapampangan, pero sa Bisaya kasi, Brad, <laughs> that is intended for the female sex organs. Ano ba? Pag, pag ganun yung pronunciation mo ha, ganun yun sa Bisaya kasi, referring to female sex organs. Pero, uh, yun. 
sa, sa Tagalog buto. <laughs> Pag binasa mo, paano sa pagkapampangan? Sige nga. Buto, ma'am. Preparing to meal po yan, ma'am, sa kapampangan. Preparing to meal po yan. Loloko pa po ata niya, ma'am. Hoy, umayos kayo. Lising, umayos ka. O, Obo, sinabi ni Mr. Ossi, refer sa, sa kapampangan, refer sa ano, male sex organs. Sa, sa Bisaya kasi, yung buto is referring to the female sex organ kasi yun. <laughs> Eh, yun talaga yung problema natin because of our uh, vernacular. ba? Diba? Eh, iba pala yung ano, sabi, eh, para lang yung sa Bisaya, yung langgam namin lumilipad. Pero ang langgam sa Tagalog, gumagapang. ba? Diba? Ang langgam sa Bisaya is yung ibon. ba? Diba? Ang ibon sa inyo or how do I pronounce yung uh, ano nga sa inyo yun? Pagkain ba? sa kapampangan, di ba? Itlog yan, ma'am, itlog. Ay, itlog pala, o. Oh. Di ba? Pagkain. <laughs> Yun, nagkakaiba-iba. Kaya, uh, wala kayong magagawa kasi, ewan ko kung sino ba kasing nauna sa pag-create ng mga salita na yan. Or just adapting the, di ba, the culture uh, as well as the, the salita. Wala tayong magagawa dyan. Anyway, do you have any question po? Kasi by next week, our next topic is, my God, pahirap ng pahirap. Kasi ang uh, next topic po ng anthropology is, uh, wait, ang um, next topic is, aha, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Ang next topic is forensic odontology. Ang i-discuss natin. So, if you have questions, anyway, uh, ma prior with our discussion on forensic odontology, we will have a quiz and at the same time, the activity. Pero yung activity, provided kong i-ano sa inyo, uh, i-assignment nyo na lang para hindi masyadong uh, toxic. So, ilagay ko po sa free. Viewable ba sa inyo yung ano, yung module 3 or module 2 lang? Module 2 pa lang. Module 2 pa lang po. PowerPoint ngayon. Okay. Okay, ipo-post ko, i ano ko lang, ililipat ko lang on the uh, canvas yung naka-prepare na activity kasi walang inattach po si Miss Hazel dito sa ano natin, sa uh, sa canvas natin. So, may mga ano ba, may mga humabol ba for the attendance para i-release ko kayo then uh, you can access the assignment naman anytime. Kasi hanggang next week naman siya. Basahin nyo yung ano, uh, instruction for the assignment. Then, we will have an objective type of quiz by next week. Okay? So that you can still have time to prepare. But yung activity nga natin, that is assignment. Yes, Mr. Dizon. Ma'am, um, late and roll po. Pwede po po magpa-attend. Ah, uh, Yes. Bali, nag-pendrol po ako last Monday. Ah, last Monday ka lang nag-pendrol. Nag-PM na po ako sa inyo. Nag-PM na po ako sa inyo, ma'am. Okay, no problem. Sinet ko na din po yung register card ko. Okay. So, just see to it na you can cope up. Kasi hindi na kayo pagbibigyan nyo yun sa natapos na activity. So, uh, tatawagin ko, Tolentino. Nandiyan ba? Wala. 
Wala si Tolentino. Pantig? Baman dito po. O, oh, late na kayo ah, dahil kanina pa kami nag-attendance. Navarro, kasi unfair sa iba. Navarro, wala talaga. Absent. Manlutak? Present po, ma'am. Okay, Manaloto? Manaloto, Christine, wala talaga. Libunaw, nandyan. Pero late ka, Libunaw, tama? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Lakson? Lakson. Nandyan ba si Lakson? Wala talaga. How about Bison, uh, uh, Ian Carlo, nandyan? De La Cruz, Brooklyn? Wala. Nandyan ba? De La Cruz? Ah, uh, si Tolentino nandiyan pa sa way. Si Tolentino. Okay. Si De La Cruz, wala. How about Carpio? Joanna. Nandyan ba si Joanna? Wala. Canlas. Jeremia. Wala. Canlas Diana. Wala rin. Alma. Ma'am, si Jeremiah po nandito po daw, ma'am. Ah, okay. So, yun lang ang absent. So, as I told you guys, you will do the activity as your assignment. Uh, ililipat ko lang siya, ha? Uh, anyway, as I said, uh, hanggang ano naman, hanggang Monday ng umaga naman isiset ko. Hanggang 8 o'clock ng umaga. That is the start of our class, di ba? So, doon po magsasarado ang uh, assignment for the activity. So, uh, basta yung activity related to the topic that has been discussed under forensic anthropology. Okay? Ma'am, yung pong PowerPoint, mapapublish din po. Yes, nakapublish po ang PowerPoint. Ah, yung sa... Yung ngayon po, ma'am. Yung uh -huh. kanina po, mapapublish na po. Okay, papublish ko. Yan, naka... Nakapublish na siya. Nakapublish 